All the kids' faces, that just blessed me so much. Walked by the class of Pastor and Melissa and Alex and heard these guys singing the joy of the Lord. Oh, that puts joy in your heart, I'm telling you. Um, Brother Tim did an amazing job. All of, all of our teachers, we are just praying for you and believing for such great things to come out of Sunday school. I was a product of Sunday school. My grandparents took me, dropped me off, and... You know, it changed my life, and I believe we're going to see lives change because of your faithfulness. So thank you so much for giving to the Lord. Uh, so make plans to be here. Sunday school starts at 9.30 each week. Be a part of what's going on um, at 9 o'clock. The donut shop, the coffee shop, I should say, is open. So come fellowship with us before that. Um, and please pray for the Sunday school program. Pray uh, that God will send people. Uh, we're praying for more children. And for adults and also for our teachers and let's just watch and see what God wants to do. Amen. 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 Um, Wednesday nights make sure to come out for um, service. We have our meal at 6 o'clock and then at 6.30 we go into a word at uh, Brother Larry teaches each week. He does a phenomenal job. Right now we're doing a lesson called When Your Way Isn't Working by Kyle Eidelman. I believe we're two weeks into that, and um, we've really enjoyed it. So make sure to be a part of that. Um, back to church Sunday, September 24th. You want to make sure to come. Pastor Joe has challenged you. Let's see 100 people in this house on that morning. Amen? Amen. And then after service that morning, we're having um, a back to church luau. That's going to be fun. So make sure... Get your Hawaiian clothes ready now. <laughs> um, make sure wear your luau stuff. I believe Kim is going to have a sign-up sheet for Pastor. Got the sign-up sheet. If you want to bring something um, to the luau, make sure to see that and sign up for that. We're going to have food, games, contests, and music. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get a hundred people here um, in service that morning, and let's just allow the Lord to have his way, and let's have some fun together, um, fellowshipping as a church body. And then last is our nursery workers needed. If you want to be a part of working in the nursery, this is a ministry. It will bless your heart. Please see Sister Virginia. Um, and then trunk or treat October 31st. Can't believe it's already that time again. Be thinking, um, putting something together for your trunk, and then also bringing candy. If Pastor Josh said that if you'll just make sure that the candy is individually wrapped, and there are some containers out there in the foyer, so make sure and drop that off. All right, we love you. We're excited. Now, if you'll just stand and let's enter into worship together. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to the Lord in prayer first. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Father God, and we ask that you would meet us where we're at today, Father God. Not to, not to keep us where we're at, but to draw us to you, Father, to change us, Father, and uh, to bring us closer to you, Father God. That you open up every ear today, Father, that they may hear from your word, Father God, and that may change their life, Father, and, and that they leave this building differently. Father, and that, that your spirit just completely comes, Father, and, and 
dreams among your people today. And be with those who are not able to be here today with us, Father, and minister to them and, and give them life and healing into their bodies today. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless all of us here this morning as we give to you, and we give you thanks 
In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Let's get back to the Lord this morning.
We love you, Father Lord, for your provision. We love you, Lord, because of just who you are. We're thankful for all that you do in our life, Lord Jesus. Today we want to thank you. We want to worship. We want to praise you, God, for all that you do. In Jesus' name, that everyone says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Can we just give Jesus Christ one more round of applause for his love? We are so thankful that you are here with us this morning, that you're visiting with us. Welcome. We are glad you're with us. If you're looking for a new church home, you don't need to look any longer. You found your place right here at the chapel. We welcome you and we thank you for coming this morning. Real quick, I want to say happy birthday to Stephen. Yes. So let's sing happy birthday to him this morning. Oh. Raise your hand, Stephen. It's your birthday. Everybody, it's Stephen's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. children this morning as they're being dismissed for Children's Church. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our children. We thank you, Lord, for our teachers. We ask, God, that you'll just meet them right where they're at today, God, in their own way, God, in their own age level, God. We pray in Jesus' name that you will come into their hearts and, and speak to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be dismissed this morning, children. Praise the Lord. They're being, being dismissed this morning. There are some that are out traveling this morning. Want to remember them in prayer. Yeah. There are some of you that came this morning that uh, may not really woke up feeling like you wanted to come, but you came anyways, and we we know God is with you. We know God has a word for you. Amen. This morning, I want to talk to you a little bit about something that a lot of pastors don't talk about. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about a pandemic, that, an epidemic that we are facing in our world today. And not just because of the COVID, um, we are in this situation. This is a situation that we have been in for many years now, and it's only getting Worse. That is that people are isolating themselves and becoming more lonely than ever before. So on this summer growth series number 11, this is, and I haven't preached every Sunday this summer. This is the 11th sermon I preached on summer growth. I know that you are all thinking about all those that you want to invite to come on Sunday the 24th. We encourage you to invite, invite, invite. Maybe there are people that have not been to church in a while. There, there may be a lot of lonely people out there that just need you to reach out and tell them that the chapel is praying for them and we love for them to come. I challenge all of you that we, that we, that you would bring a hundred people. Now, what would I do if you brought a hundred people? I would shout, but I didn't come up with anything, so there's not anything that I have to do in order for you to bring a hundred people, right? We're not going to do that because, you know what, Pastor Joe's not going to do anything silly for you to bring people to church, amen? That's our job to invite and reach out, yeah. amen? But I encourage you to do that. God is on, on the move here at Pitt Chapel. However, I did tell Mike that if he came to church this morning, that I would do 10 push-ups. <laughs> we turned it to 10. It went to 10. But then he keeps telling me that I don't have to do 10 push-ups. <laughs> I haven't had to do 10 push-ups yet. He says I don't have to. But I would, because I, you know, I could do 10 push-ups. How many believe that Pastor Joe can do 10 push-ups? How many believe that Pastor Joe 
cannot do 10 push-ups. <laughs> Did you raise your finger? <laughs> Alicia, I can do more than 10 push-ups. <laughs> Turn your Bibles this morning to Summer Psalms. Summer Psalms chapter 142, verses 4. We have visitors here that uh, came all the way from Florida that had used to attend this church many years ago. We welcome you to be with us. Some of you may know you. I'm sure there's some. Do you know them? Bless them. I'm sure you know them. You know, Shirley probably knows them. Welcome. Psalms 142, verses 4. What was Paul thinking? I mean, what was David thinking here? I know some of you are thinking, well, Paul, that's in the New Testament. What was David thinking here? Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Refuge has failed me. No one cares for my soul. Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together in this place in one accord, in unity, in believing, God, that you're with us. Bless this word today, God, as I free my anoint every word that I share this morning. In your favor, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. How do you think David felt here? Have you ever felt like no one cares? Maybe it's just the people in your family. Nobody cares about me. There's been times in my life where I have felt that. There's been times in my life where I felt lonely. The title of my message this morning is Starving for Connection. There's so many people today that are starving for connection. There's so many couples that are starving for connection. There's so many teenagers and young adults. You'll be surprised as I preach this morning what you'll hear about our teenagers and our young adults. There's so many that are lonely. There's so many that are isolated. The cell phone has not helped us, has it? We thought maybe we can stay communicated on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and all of the other social medias that are out there. But all it's doing is isolating us and turning us into a more selfish community than anything. And I wanted to share with you this morning that, that we are living in a time where we need each other. Amen. We need people in our life. God did not create us to be alone. He realized that Adam was all alone and he knew that it was not good. So he made him a helpmate. Can you say amen? amen. He made him a woman who he could live out his life and create a family and create a community. According to new data from Cigna, more than half of U.S. adults, that's 58%, are considered lonely. Men and women have roughly the same likelihood of loneliness. 57 of men and 59% of women reported being lonely. Young adults are twice as likely to be lonely than seniors. Can you believe that? But that is what statistics are telling us today. 79% of adults ages 18 to 24 report, report feeling lonely compared to 41% of seniors age 66 and older. More than two in five adults, 42% age 18 to 34 report always feeling left out compared to just 16% of people age 55 or older who say the same. But I think as we get older, we learn how to deal with loneliness. Maybe some of you stay busy. I know my mom spent a lot of time being alone and she never once told me that she was lonely, but I knew that there were times that she felt lonely. She would just turn on her TV and leave it on the whole day and she would sit at her table and she would do her crosswords or whatever she did. But I have learned something about that. I started thinking about that just this week. I am one who, I don't get lonely too often. I do well when I am by myself. And I'm not saying that that is a good thing and I'm not saying that is a bad thing. 
but I have learned to train my mind to stay busy so I don't feel those times of loneliness. But church, even your pastor needs people, amen? amen. We all need people. I can tell you and share with you statistics about how lonely pastors are or people that are in ministry, but I'm not going to go there today because we all know that we all suffer, we all struggle in this area of loneliness at one time or another in our life. The Bible says in Genesis 2, verses 18, it is not good for man to be alone, but the truth is all of us will go through lonely times in our lives. How many believe that this morning? Part of that wasn't the scripture. The scripture was it's not good for man to be alone. But we will all go through times. There are four causes of loneliness that I want to share with you this morning. That is not my message points, but I'm going to give you these four and share with you where people get lonely at in their lives. Four causes of loneliness. Transitions. When you're transitioned from one place to another, life is a series of transitions. Separation, when you're isolated from those you love, whether through a re relocation, illness, or re relational problem, it can lead to loneliness. Opposition, when you feel like everyone is against you. David felt like everyone was against him. When you feel like everyone is against you at work, when you feel like everybody is against you at home, when you feel like everybody is against you at school or maybe, maybe even at church. Rejection is another cause. When someone betrays or rejects you, loneliness can come. And I believe that a lot of us have been in that situation before. This morning I want to share with you four points. Now here are my four points this morning to consider when you're starving for connection. Now I know not everybody in this room is starving for connection, but let me tell you something. We can get ourselves in a place where we are starving for connection and not even realize it. So when I go through this sermon this morning, I want to encourage you to take note. It may not apply to you, but there are going to be some areas in this sermon that will apply to all of us. Can you say amen? amen. Because that's how the Holy Spirit works. Amen. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been hurt in the past and afraid to build close friends, afraid to get hurt or rejected. So number one, Minimize your hurt. Minimize your hurt. One thing as a pastor, and I'll tell you this, over the years there's been times where people have left church, good friends of mine have left church, good friends of mine have decided not to be friends anymore because of something that took place in the church or this or that. This has happened over and over and over in many pastor's lives. And I can just tell you that sometimes people can just be cruel. Yeah. Not just to the pastor, but to his family. Not just to the pastor's family, but to other people in the church. And I want to encourage you this morning, if you're that person who feels like you have to just tell what's on your mind, you might want to hold your tongue sometimes. Yeah. Amen? Amen. It's not edifying anything or anybody when you're saying something that's cruel or saying something that you feel like needs to be said to somebody or whatever. I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's not in my notes. Nobody has said it to anything to me lately. In fact, you've all been really wonderful to us in this church, and we appreciate all of you. But I want to encourage you this morning. Don't rehearse your pain over and over in your mind. Instead, refuse to become resentful. And that's where I live my life. I have learned over the years just to rise above what people say. Because just like Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I truly believe that sometimes people say things and they really don't know what they're doing or how harmful it can be. So I have learned to rise above that. I even learned for 
maybe not learn, but I have made myself to isolate myself in this little, oh, uh, what, what, I don't even know what you would call it, just so I won't get hurt from people in the church. Now that's just me. But I love every one of you. I'm not saying that you hurt me or anything like that, but sometimes we need to rise above this situation or what people say and just tell God they don't know any better and pray for them, amen? Because it doesn't do any good for us to rehearse pain over and over what people have said or refuse to become we want to encourage you to refuse to become become resentful. Refuse it. Bitterness and loneliness often, often go hand in hand. You can't allow bitterness to grow. If somebody hurts you and you become bitter and you allow it to grow, it's going to affect everybody around you, not just you, yourself. Paul describes his attitude in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 16. He said, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. What a great attitude to have. They came against me, but don't hold it against them. Despite being abandoned, he refused to show resentment toward the people who didn't come when he needed them the most. Have you ever been there before? Have you ever been in a position where you felt like nobody is there for you or you're going through a tr troubling time in your life and you share those troubling times with people and they act like they just don't care? Well, that's going to happen to all of us. But I hope that you all have friends and people in your life that care enough about you that you can feel like there are people on your side. But there are going to be times where you're going to feel you're all alone. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. For if you forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I have seen so many people that stayed away from family members and friends because of they've been hurt and they don't want to be hurt again. And they've isolated themselves to be alone. And it has caused loneliness and it's caused bitterness in their life. And it's caused people are going to hurt you. How many have ever been hurt by people? Yeah. Anybody? Nobody's raising their hands. We've all been hurt by people, haven't we? But we need to learn to forgive. And we're not forgiving for those people. We're forgiving for ourselves. So we can have a, 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 a time in our life where God can use us. God can live through us. We can still be around people. We can still forgive. But let me tell you something. It's important to know that we need to forgive because none of us deserved it when God sent his only son to die on the cross for you and I to forgive us of our sins we didn't deserve it but he's done it for us anyways and there are going to be people in your life where they don't deserve it but you forgive anyways amen yeah. praise the Lord forgiveness is not just about saying the words it is an active process in which you make a conscious decision to let go of negative feelings, whether the person deserves it or not. Resentment only makes loneliness worse. You ever been there? Resentment only makes loneliness worse. Resentment locks you in self-imposed prison and drives people away from you. Well, how do they know I'm being resentful? Your attitude around them. 
We are not being very kind. They can pick up these little clues and these little things that you're doing that they know that there is something wrong. According to a survey by a nonprofit institute, 62% of American adults say they need more forgiveness in their personal lives. I, I think I can use more forgiveness in my personal life. I, I know I've shared this story because it's a big deal in my life. Years ago at youth camp, the Lord done something within me and I've been able to forgive people that have hurt me in my life that it has, because I let that go and I forgave these people, I feel like the Lord has done something within me throughout my life to where it's easy for me to forgive people. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Studies have found that some people are just naturally more forgiving. Consequently, they tend to be more satisfied with their lives and to have less depression, anxiety, stress, anger, and hostility. People who hang on to grudges, however, are more likely to experience severe depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, as well as other health conditions. But that doesn't mean that they can't train themselves to act in a healthier way. I believe God can heal you. Amen? Amen. I truly believe God healed me, and I believe that it has affected me in a way, in a positive way throughout my life. Forgiving people just comes naturally to me. And some people it doesn't come naturally to. 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 8 says, And above all things have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. So important that we all love everyone. Amen? God tells us to love, love everybody. Amen. How many know that God loves you. And God loves every human being on this planet. Amen. And God directs us to love one another. Amen? Amen? So if you have love for one another, it's going to be easy for you to forgive. Well, how do you say that, Pastor Joe? Because you have to love the person that you forgive. Amen? Amen? And if you love them, that doesn't mean you have to always be around them. That doesn't mean you have to live your life according to their wishes. You don't have to dictate your life, life because of them. Forgiveness is so powerful. Forgiveness is so important. And I just wanted to share that with you this morning. And I think I've kind of nailed that in the ground this morning. Number two, emphasize, emphasize others' needs. Emphasize others' needs. When you're lonely, when you feel like you're disconnected, emphasize others' needs. You need to focus on others. Look outward, not inward. Loneliness is a decision. Ultimately, a fear of love often drives loneliness. We don't want to let anyone hurt us. So we keep everyone at a distance. That simply leads to more loneliness. Even in his dying days, Paul focuses on others rather than having a pity party. Look at chapter, or look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Paul writes, so that I might preach the good news in its entirely for the Gentiles to hear. He could have thrown a pity party, but he didn't. And even during his loneliness, Paul is thinking about all the people he wants to share the good news with. I think it's so important for us to reach out. I think it's so important for us to share the good news. Did you know by reaching out, 
by meeting new people, by visiting people, say you want to go visit people in the hospital, by reaching out to your neighbor or reaching out to somebody in the church, it builds connections, amen? Connections is so important. Philippians chapter two, verses three through six. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness and mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Did you know loneliness sometimes can be a selfish act? What are you talking about, Pastor Joe? I'm lonely and I'm not being selfish. I know sometimes you can do things like what I'm talking about today by isolating yourself, by not being around people because you don't want to be hurt, by just causing yourself to be alone, by not forgiving. These can all be selfish acts. Not every lonely person is being selfish, but I want to share with you this morning Paul understood this concept. He understood that in order for him to do what God has called him to do, he needed to look past what he was going through. He needed to rise above the situation. He needed to forgive people and not be resentful. Acts chapter 20 verses 35 says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Church, if you are living a lonely life, I believe if you begin to give, if you begin to reach out, if you begin to connect and you begin to give of yourself, you will overcome this. Amen? Amen. I know I'm preaching good when I get one amen. <laughs> Hebrew chapter 13, verse 16 says, But do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifice God is well pleased. God loves a cheerful giver, amen. Amen. What this means is that we have a vertical responsibility to God, and yet at the same time, we have a horizontal responsibility to those around us. We are not simply to offer lip service to God, praising Him and giving things in His name, while at the same time ignoring what He expects of us toward those around us. Amen? We can't be worshiping God and neglecting those that are around us. Mother Teresa put it like this. Life without other people is the worst disease any human being can ever experience. When you are lonely, you need to stop building walls and start building bridges instead of complaining about your loneliness. Ask God to help you be a friend to someone else who needs it. I think part of this is basically just stepping out of our comfort zone. And I'm not trying to get on anybody's case this morning, but I think in order for us to step out of our comfort zone, we got to meet new people. How many of you like to meet new people? This is Pastor Joe when he walks in a room that doesn't know anybody. Okay, in my mind I'm thinking, okay, this is scary. I don't want to talk to anybody. And you're thinking, Pastor Joe, you're not like that. You're really friendly, outgoing. When I'm in a room and I don't know anybody, I'm like this. And then something within me stirs up. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have to face my fear and get out there and start feeding people. Amen? And so then I act like, in my mind, I'm going like this. But I know that I just got to be nat try to act natural. And some of you know that I act natural when I'm talking to people. But in reality, I don't feel that. I don't feel natural within by myself. But that's not just 
your fault or anybody around me's fault. It's because I've I isolated myself on purpose because I feel more comfortable that way. Now, church, I'm being transparent, and you're probably thinking, Pastor Joy, we don't need to hear any of this. But church, I know I need people too. And I know that I need to step out and meet people. Amen? Yes. How many of you sit at home and you could go hours without talking to your husband or your wife? That can happen. Even couples sometimes get lonely. Even couples need people around them. Amen? <laughs> I think sometimes even as parents, as their kids grow up and they move out and they, uh, at first, they're really excited. Oh, get the house to ourselves. They only call us when they need us. We don't hear from them hardly ever. We might get a text here and there. It's hard sometimes to be around, not to be around your children, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm hours away from my kids. And sometimes it gets lonely because you want to see them. You want to be around them. I, I totally get it. Even if they're a mile away from you, it's still hard. You're not around them. Even if you're just a few hours away, it's hard. I can, I can, I can relate. Number three, socialize in community and friendship. Socialize in community and friendship. Although many churches rightly teach on marriage, parenting, and family issues, it seems rare for a church to do a deep sermon series on friendship and community. Fellowship is so important, isn't it? I like the fact that we can come together on Wednesday nights and fellowship, amen? I like it when people are coming together on Sunday morning and they're fellowshipping with coffee and donut. Fellowship is so important. We need each other. The Old Testament highlights Israel's calling as a family, the friendship of David and Jonathan, and wisdom regarding friendship and loyalty. What about the New Testament? The New Testament provides a vision of Jesus building relationships through discipleship. Think about the witness of the early church community in Acts. What about the one another commands in the epistles and the Hope of eternal fellowship at the end of the age. One day we're going to be in heaven, amen, and we're going to be all together in fellowship. Praise the Lord, worshiping and praising the Lord. What will it be like in heaven? We only get a glimpse, but I believe like we're going to be able to live a, 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 a healthy life. No more sin, no more death, no more pain in a new place in a heavenly place, amen, with our Lord and our Savior, with each other. We're not going to be in our own little rooms all by ourselves and lonely. We're going to be together in fellowship. So you might as well get used to it here on earth, amen? amen. Do not neglect the, the sibling of your brothers and your sisters. Paul's letters emphasizes and establishing healthy community in the local church through sacrificial relationships. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 10 through 13. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulations, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. These are all areas where people have to be involved. Amen? Amen. Paul realized this. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. Now, we don't want you to stop telling us what your needs are, sharing with us what you're going through. Those are so important still, amen? But it's also important for us to be there for somebody else when they're going through a troubling time. We can't always soak up all 
the attention. We're all going through tribulation, tribulation times. We're all going through tough times. Psalm 133, verses 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. I believe Pitt Chapel is a unified body. Amen? I believe that we all love one another. I believe that we care and lift one another up and we encourage one another. Proverbs 27, verse 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. I love the fact that we can come together, encourage one another, build each other up, listen to one another, uh, share the word with one another, just strengthen our relationship with Christ with one another. We need people in our lives. We need relationship. We need fellowship. We need love and we need acceptance. We need community. Can you say amen? amen? We need each other. Praise the Lord. Number four. I'm going to get you guys out of here 15 minutes before noon. Raise your hand when it comes to 15 minutes before noon. That way you all know when to stop. That way you can go out with your brothers and sisters and have fellowship with one another. Amen? Amen. Number four, recognize God's presence. Amen. Amen. God is right beside you when you're lonely. Paul recognized this in verse 17. But the Lord stood with me and gave me strength. We are never alone. Loneliness is a signal. It's time to get to know God better. Amen? Amen. Well, what, else, what else do you have to do? If you're all lonely and you're pouting and you're like, nobody loves me, I'm going to go eat worms. How about open up the Word of God and let the presence of Jesus soak inside you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Chance back there is getting Pentecostal on me, I think. Stephen's amen me a lot. Praise the Lord. I love these. I love these guys. They need us, amen. And we need them. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is dear to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit. Jeremiah 29, 13, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Isn't it just funny that God is standing right here? And you're right here. He's like right next to you. But sometimes we can get so caught up in our own selfishness and our own lives that we just, and, and we, we don't read the word anymore, we don't pray anymore, we don't worship the Lord, and we seem so far away from God, even though he's right here, and we're right here. But he's wanting us, it's going to take work, amen? It's going to take work to get into the word. Sometimes getting into the word, it takes work. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It takes work, it takes discipline. And in order to reach where God is, it takes determination and it takes time. Amen? Amen. Reaching out to the Lord, worshiping Him, praising Him, reading His Word, talking to Him. Even though you don't think He's listening, He's listening. Amen? Amen. Just keep talking. And sometimes it's time to just, whoa, felt like the, the ground shook on me this morning. Sometimes it just feels like, that's what bifocals do to you sometimes. Okay, church, here we are. We're just doing our own thing, and we're just reading the Word, and you're not even understanding what you're reading, or you're just praying, and you're doing all the talking. Have you ever been around somebody that just talk, 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 talk? One of my kids the other day said, said to me, Dad, I'm telling you, this person that I work with, all they do is talk nonstop. And I looked at, I looked at him and I said, you know what? Sometimes I feel that way when I'm around you, that you talk nonstop. 
and we both laugh. You know what? Maybe God is standing there like, will you just listen to me? I have something to tell you and you're doing all the talking. I don't want to hear any of that. I have something to tell you this morning. You ever been there? Sometimes you just need to be still and know that he has a word for you. He is God. He has a way for you and he has a he has something to say. Amen. Oh God, I just don't understand why people just don't care about me anymore. But God, the church tells me that you love me and you care for me and you'll never leave me nor forsake me. Blah, 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 blah. Settle down, son. Let me comfort you. Psalm 145, verses 18. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 8. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. He's always with you. He always cares for you. He will always love you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never hurt you. He will never abandon you. He cares. You might be here this morning and you say, Pastor Joe, nobody cares for me. Or Pastor Joe, I, I've just been so stuck on myself, I haven't thought about anybody else lately. Or maybe you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Joe, today I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. I want to serve him. I want to make him Lord of my life. I want to feel this comfort that you're talking about from a father who loves me, cares for me, who says that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Or Pastor Joe, I've kind of been away from God for a while and I've just feel lonely because I've disconnected myself. And I just need encouragement today. Maybe you're here this morning and you're that person. Let's all stand this morning. I want to pray for you all. Father, we just come to you this morning. With all of us together, caring about your word and hearing that we need to connect ourselves with one another, we even need to connect ourselves with you, Lord. There are people here, God, that are feeling lonely in their life, feeling left out. Maybe some are hurt, maybe some are struggling, maybe some have been rejected. Bring comfort to them and forgiveness in their life, Lord Jesus. Let them be merciful to those around them. Lord, maybe there are some today that just need to step out of their comfort zone and meet new people, to connect themselves. Maybe they've had a hard time connecting with people in their life outside of church, outside of the workplace. Father, I just pray, God, that you would bring connection, friendship, people in their life. Lord, help us all to learn to reach out into a community that needs help, that needs friends. <clears throat> Lord, there's so many people around this world that we live in today that are lonely and they need connection. Let us be people who will reach out and be a friend to somebody in need. Lord, I just pray right now, God, that those that are here this morning that want to come and know you as their personal Savior, that they will surrender completely to you. Asking for forgiveness in their life. We, we know, God, that just being a good person doesn't do it. We need a Savior. 
Forgive, Father, Lord, today those that are struggling in that area. Come into their life. Encourage them to ask you, Lord, to come into their lives, to make you Lord of their life. Lord, we don't just need a Savior, we need a Lord in our life. We need you. We need each other. And I pray this prayer, Father, Lord, if there's anybody here that are struggling in their health, this can cause somebody also to feel lonely. I pray, God, that you'll heal them in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, Father, Lord, for healing. That's the healing all over this room right now in Jesus' name. Those that are listening, watching online, bring forgiveness into their life, bring healing into their life in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, that your will be done, and God, that we can go forth and do what you've called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. It's 15 minutes till. Enjoy your afternoon.